Lemon Amiga Friend A Play Giant Video Review Play Giant Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Sit back and enjoy the show Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. In this week's show, we'll be checking out Stardust, developed and published by Blood House in 1993. begins with a very memorable introduction sequence, not at all ripped off a popular movie franchise, and it comes with some great music as well, which is highly reminiscent of a full string orchestra. This rolling introduction sequence first appeared in the 1920s and 30s with the serial films which appeared in the movies, and each one of those serials opened with brief synopsis of the previous episode and that just brought everybody back up to date week to week and Joe Lucas took that on for the first Star Wars or shall I say now the third one before he makes any more prequels and sequels to that and as you can hear this music is very atmospheric Stardust is an overhead asteroid clone, which I have played quite a few times already in the Lemon Amiga Games competition. This was recorded actually quite some time after that games competition, and as you can see from the controls, it works perfectly well with one fire button, and space in this case selects the weapon. You can also pause the game with the P key, and let's not detract of course from this great music on the title screen. This is definitely one of those Amiga games that you can simply load up just to hear that great title music and I guess I have done that on more than one occasion and I also like the great title screen, it illuminates and glows with a great gold and silver motif over what looks like could be a blue crushed velvet background and I really do like that luminance on the Amiga. the fire button will take us on to the options menu and from here we can change the number of lives that the game gives us and we'll leave that on seven lives and you can also enter and clear the passwords and they shall take you on to another stage but for now let's start on stage one level one and this game contains 30 levels split over five worlds and each one of those worlds is linked by a tunnel We'll get tunnel sequence action in this game in virtual 3D. Let's check out the first level. This is level 1.2 I'm actually playing at the moment. You don't have to play these in the correct order, but I found by playing this one, you should find an easy gun power. That means we can fire our very first weapon, the three-way, just a little bit faster. We 
also find power-ups, and those will help us get rid of all these asteroids that we have to blow up. And yes, we'll have to blow all of these up in order to complete that level. After a bonus based on shot accuracy and time remaining, we get to go back to the map screen and from here we get to choose another level. This time it's 1.5 and yes I am attacking these levels in a priority order. By pressing the space bar, that brings up our weapons menu and at the moment we only have that three way and that really isn't going to get us very far in all this. Luckily we can pull back on the joystick and that will give us a temporary shield. That's our second weapon collected, that's the bouncer. Then you'll be given at least one weapons upgrade per section of levels and the bouncer will require powering up itself. By pressing the space bar we can divert our power-ups to our new bouncer and you can see it requires five in order to get full power on that and so every one of those G symbols collected will now power up the bouncer but we can also select our current weapon as the main weapon this three-way only requires a three grade power-up we're actually on grade three power at the moment so hopefully now this three-way is on full power we can now collect well, that heart was great, that gives us full energy. Well, we've just lost most of that energy, but you see the energy bar is on the right hand side. That was full, but that's now being drained every time I hit something. You can see we're on minimum shield as well. But the shield should be a silver bar by energy, but we've used all that. But luckily, we can progress in this game pretty far on just the minimum. So let's see how far we can get on this role play. And yes, I am actually following a lookup guide which I made during the Lemon Amiga competition, which gives me my favourite method of completing these first levels. And that means tackling these levels in a particular order. And now that the three way is powered up and all the power is going to our weapon, it means that we can simply collect all those cheese and stay out of the way of all those enemies. With a few power ups, now we can activate that bouncer and that will now bounce around the screen and be much more effective. Of each level, you'll have to be on the move to avoid this melee of ray traced asteroids. And ray tracing, or ray casting as it's sometimes known, was in its infancy in these days, thanks to new 3D imaging software like Imagine, and before that, we only got digitized effects like the digitized asteroids that we found in the game Blood Money, the intro to that. And I always thought, wouldn't it be great to have? A game just like Blood Money with digitized asteroids that we have to negotiate. This map screen will also give us some basic information, and in this case, there is a weapon that's collectible on this level. But I already have my weapons collectibles, what I really need is some extra armor. Extra life. But I collect an extra life instead, that puts us up to 8 lives. And we haven't lost a life yet, but unfortunately we are on meager rations at the moment. So let's make sure that we are fully powered up at the moment. And let's actually save our best weapon. And let's use the three way as the better spread in this case. And look at that, just lost our first life. After that we gain some extra stats, which tell us how good or bad we did during our stint with that life and pressing the fire button of course will take us back to the game and you can continue on. Every time we lose a life, unfortunately we'll lose one upgrade to the current weapon that we were firing 
and because that was the three way I made sure that that didn't affect my best weapon and that's one way to preserve your best weapons and the power up and as soon as you get that life back you can then switch back to that and clean up that level now that I've upgraded all the weapons back to the top let's choose the three way as a defense and let's hang around and wait for this shield to appear because those power-up tokens will eventually degrade and then disappear we can wait for them and collect the shield which is the next one down and we have virtually full energy but we're moving on to the final level of the six in the first section and i know shield power is going to be at a premium here So we managed to survive the first section without losing a life and only managed to lose one right at the end so it is possible to survive on virtually nothing in this game and as you can see there is actually a sub boss on this level and sometimes if we get into trouble it's possible to use that shield and simply save that energy and move ahead of all those objects collected as many shield power-ups as possible we can now tackle that final boss and he isn't really hard all we have to do is to get into a safe spot and simply use your shields whenever that boss is firing firepower and release that shield as soon as that danger has passed first boss can be quite tricky and if you don't aim on target then you will find your shots are wasted and if you don't use the best weaponry of course and it is possible to dive in there with the shield and blast that thing away but I find simply taking your time and aiming on the straight line into that means that we can get through that boss and now that we've completed that we get to move on to the next section and we do that via one of those famous tunnel sequences that Stardust is so famous for and the tunnel sequence actually opens with an information screen which appears and is quite unique in the game that gives us some information about what we're going to face and in this case mines and asteroids are the usual candidates and well that gives us a nice disposable hero type part of the game and then we get to move on to the 3d section which is perhaps the most famous aspect of stardust and yes this will run on an amiga 1000 machine if you upgrade that to 512k of memory and back in 1985 we couldn't imagine games like this on the Amiga but back there in 1993 3D was all the rage and we were just getting up to the time of chunky pixels instead of planar aspect ratios which gives us the flat bit planes that we experienced on the 8 bits and on the Amiga and so bit planes are still used in this game the background is actually very nicely drawn so it appears 3D but that's just a special effect and of course the graphics get larger as they appear and move through that screen which makes them look 3D as well the end of that even more bonuses are handed out and those rocks that you can blow up actually give you 300 points each but it's best just to avoid everything in the tunnel sequences and save those lives because the levels in this game are really merciless and you'll need all of those lives as you progress 
and I've actually managed to get to the third world of the five in this game. And if you want to see a long play, I'd certainly recommend the Zeus Jazz channel. Zeus Daz has a great long play on there. He seems to make it look very easy. And of course, in the world of long plays, Ricky C has a long play of this game. But for the moment, we'll persevere with our normal play. And let's choose a level, which is perhaps the hardest level on the second world. For this, I will move back to the three way because I'm anticipating getting killed. And we are about to be attacked by a horde of Amiga balls which you have to follow behind, otherwise you'll get killed. fully powered up weapon, the tricky part is to blow up one of those guys, and if a weapon's power up gets in the way, sometimes that can cause problems. The trick is to concentrate your fire on one of those in particular, you can see the yellow one has gone, and let's concentrate on the silver until that disappears and that should give us a nice open space in which we can attack the rest of that level. I like to tackle that level first of all because I always die and 2.6 there so I'd recommend choosing that first. And we still have some lives at this point, it is possible to get far in this game. And you may have noticed that we collected that weapons power up, that's the plasma. And it really helps to get that powered up early in this level. And then you can simply motor through it. Because the enemies in this game really require the best weapon with the best power up to destroy those in time. And if you don't you might run out of time. And if you run out of time then it's more or less game over. Weapon ship only appears once, and if you miss that, if it moves off the screen, then you won't get that weapon. In this case, that was a simple missile that we failed to pick up, and homing missiles in this game help, but aren't really crucial. Let's try to get some more shield power, and let's try to save our remaining lives. Roadhouse, we're based in Helsinki. Finland, and most of the guys that worked on this game were from Finland. We also had a distribution office in Kent, but Blood House, this was their first game, the second game being of course Super Stardust, which appeared a year later in 1994, and the AGA version made it onto the CD32 in 1995. This game was coded mostly by Harry Tikkanen, and Harry Tikkanen worked on the Super Stardust and moved on to The Reap on the PC in 1997. It was also co-coded by Yussi Hartzell and no information can be found about him. The graphics in this game were coded by a number of guys including Yanni Isaranta, Petri Putkonen, Celeborn Hagenberg and Samsa Vertanen. music you can hear was coded by Ristro Viori and he also worked with Bass Bomb on this game. No idea who Bass Bomb is, probably not to be confused by Bomb the Bass. Unfortunately these guys only work together on this one game and on the Super Stardust game so this finished creation was a masterpiece in of itself. Stardust eventually made it to the PC, but for a long time it was an Amiga exclusive, just like Super Frog and many other games that we've reviewed. 
and being Amiga exclusive with these great, great graphics and this great, great sound and music, well, that just made the experience all the better. You can imagine that this game is an upgrade of Blastroids, which appeared on the Amiga in 1989, converted by Imageworks. It was an original arcade title, of course, which was inspired by Asteroids. Asteroids first appeared in November of 1979, it was designed by Lyle Rains and programmed by Ed Log. Asteroids was inspired by Computer Space, which appeared in 1971, and Computer Space was in fact inspired by Space War, which first came out February 1962. At one time, Asteroids games were popular and had a great lineage. These days, not many games follows the Asteroids outline, and even in modern Elite games, you cannot actually blow up Asteroids. So the Asteroids formula kind of died out in the late 90s, and so this was perhaps one of the pinnacles of that genre. Amiga, it's very easy to get into trouble, and I'm very much in trouble on this level. But as long as we have time in the bank, and look at that, some more shield power. Thanks to the great inertia in this game, it really does take some time to get used to that. And that's one of the aspects of this game which really makes it very, very controllable, because the inertia has been programmed to perfection. Through these levels in the easiest order known to mankind, we will choose level 2.5 now, and hopefully this is pretty easy as long as you have that best weapon, and as long as you destroy everything right from the go. The hardest ones to knock out are apparently the gold ones, with the silver ones the easiest to knock out, and sometimes you have to hit those things multiple times in order to destroy those, and all those require well, you can see I've managed to pick up the homing missile. All those require multiple hits to destroy, and pick up these bonuses doesn't hurt at all. But it really does hurt if you blow up with that best weapon, because now you are being bombarded by those guys. It's best just to use that spread and see if you can take out as many as possible. So I really do have respect for this game. It's certainly not a walkover. If this game was really good, it would allow the player to get far really quickly, but unfortunately it doesn't. Dedicated play and mastery of this game really does reward the player, but again, it takes a long time to play it. Let's try to collect that. Well, I missed, unfortunately, the heart, which would have given us some more energy, but I managed to find a bomb that blows everything up on the screen. And that's certainly the easiest way to clear everything on the level, because you don't have to fire a single shot. Moving on to the final level, and as soon as we complete the final level, we'll face level 2 boss. And the level 2 boss is harder than the level 1 boss, as you would imagine. And after that, well, we'll move on to another level entirely. But as you are about to see, having taken a dive, it's a choice between using a very weakly powered up plasma, a very weakly powered up bouncer, or the full strength 3 way. Which can we choose? Well, it's a big decision. And, well, three out of six there for the plasma. It's tempting to use that. But I'm about to choose the bouncer. And in this particular level, you can be destroyed pretty quickly if you go the wrong way during this, what looks like a minefield of spinning mines attacking the player. And I like to head towards the corners and then run away from those guys and hopefully we can get through that. It's not really possible to knock those out, so it's best to avoid all those all costs, head for those corners, and, well, unfortunately, forgot to put on the shield. And that was probably the mistake which cost me this game, because now we really do not have enough firepower to get through it. Let's try to use that plasma, and, well, look at that, we are simply bouncing off those asteroids without much hope. This 
game has bags of character and tons of atmosphere, also including that amazing introduction sequence, and as we've seen on the Amiga, no Amiga game can be complete without some kind of space intro, then this is yet another one. But it has that, it also has the ray traced graphics, also has the music and the playability, which again is tough, it's certainly not for the novice. The game came on three discs, which isn't amazing, but I think the first disc contains the introduction animation and the first few levels, and then the second disc contains worlds two and three, and four or five are on this three, so that means disc swapping is at a minimum. But if you run out of time, you'll find yourself in a hellhole, which you cannot get out of unless you have the very best weapon in the game. And just like normal, I will enter this and unfortunately die. But as you can see, it's game over, unfortunately. I've stood my last, and it's great that it gives us a rating as well. A rating of how bad or good we did. Unfortunately, those are pretty insulting ratings and you have to be a master to get anything above pathetic. But that score is relatively pathetic compared to some of the scores I've seen in this game. And it's got that amazing background wacken that have been used in the tunnel sequences of this game. Well, that would have been amazing, but what we do have is a great atmosphere and a great game. But I think it could have been improved, and they certainly did improve this game in Super Stardust which we shall review maybe next year but for now if you manage to get this far you can actually save your progress apparently and collecting that will give you the password to access that part of the game but unfortunately we're not going to do that what we're going to do instead is we're going to have a look at long play footage which again has been supplied by ricky c and the long play the illegal long plays you can see the second level boss requires to take that thing down bit by bit. After that we will find a thrust level with at least two lives available. I have managed to get this far and pick up those two lives. And after that we go through another tunnel sequence. There are four tunnel sequences in this game. None of which unfortunately are the triangular tunnel that we got on the front cover of Mega Format the magazine. But those are in the game. You can see ray trace graphics at every stage. And even though these backgrounds do not animate, I think that the enemies on offer are really great, and this was really console standards for 1993. And it's a pity that I actually never got this far because it's very tough. And look at those colours on that thing. So apart from the background animations, I think that this game is amazing. You get all the bosses in the game. And Right at the end of the game, you get all the bosses to kill all over again, and so you'll have to have the best weapon for that. But I certainly have respect for it, even though I am never going to complete this game in my entire life. Finally, the scores. Powerplay gave this game 70%, Amiga User International gave Stardust 80%, Amiga Joker gave it 80%, the CU Amiga score was 81%, Lemon currently gives it 82 Amiga Format gave it 88 Amiga Power gave Stardust 89%, The One gave it 91%, and Amiga Down Under gave this 91% with Amiga Computing with the highest score of 92%, which all combined gives Stardust an average rating of 8.5 out of 10. When you complete the game, or rather say if you complete the game, or rather should I say when you watch that long play, you'll be presented by the final credits and the coders, and you can actually see a real 3D thing floating around in space. And that would have been the future of the Amiga, but unfortunately they did not access the 3D capabilities to the full, and that's a shame, but this game is great, it's certainly amazing, it certainly was eye-popping when I played this at the time, and when I played that great Amiga cover disc demo. But for now, thank you for watching another Lemon Amiga play guide and review, I hope this has helped you play this game, or at least understand how to play it, and I hope to see you again in the next one sometime soon. Thank you.